Hi everybody, this is Clinton at the Best Buy blog and bestbuy.ca. I have two audio interfaces to review for you today. The Focusrite Scarlett Solo and 2i2, fourth generation audio interfaces. They're brand new as of September 2023. While they're the fourth generation audio interface of the Scarlett line from Focusrite, they have some really cool enhancements, improvements, and one particular new feature that I really like. Over the next few minutes, I will introduce you to the two interfaces, the Solo and the 2i2. I will walk you through some of the features. I will demonstrate some of the sound and you can have a better idea of what these audio faces offer. If you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the Best Buy channel for more product reviews. And if you want to purchase these products, the link is directly below to the Best Buy website. With these fourth generation Scarlett interfaces, Focusrite definitely has upped the game. They have the famous Focusrite preamps, which sound luxurious and rich and just has the best quality sound, especially at this price point. I think it's an amazing value. They also have carried on a feature that they had on the third generation interface, the air feature, which is this button right here. And what it does is it adds a, what we call a presence. It's a, it's a high end frequency lift to your sound. So in my vocals, it will shine a little more and cut through, which makes it subtly much more audible for our ears. And there's also a second layer to the air feature that they've added, which is a drive, which is a saturation. So it adds some heft and warmth to the sound that makes it sound a little bit like analog technology. It's a digital model of that, but it sounds amazing. Direct monitoring is really a push button away. So if you're working and you're finding that your computer is working hard, you switch to direct monitoring and you will have a direct signal. The headphone amp has been redesigned. I must say it sounds amazing in my ears. They've also updated the audio digital conversion in the Scarlet series. Now they feature the Focusrite RedNet converters that are used in their higher end studio audio digital converters. I'll just say right away, I'm very impressed with the sound. When I did some initial tests before jumping into making my review, I really, really, really thought that the preamps sounded amazing. I'm a big fan of these Focusrite preamps, but they sound better than ever. And I just keep on thinking about, well, geez, if I'm gonna spend the money I spend on a unit like this, I'm sure getting a lot back in terms of sound. There's a reason the preamp sounds so much better. They've increased the headroom on the preamp. Previous generations had about 55 decibels of headroom, whereas the fourth generation is now up to 69 decibels of headroom. This means that not only can you use the Focusrite Scarlet series with condenser microphones, but you can also comfortably use them with dynamic microphones, which are quite often the type of microphone that is used for voice recording like podcasts. Right here, I have the solo interface, a very simple interface with a headphone jack, an output for your monitors, two preamps, one is for guitar only with the quarter inch jack. The other one is for XLR, which has the connector on the back. And then there are some buttons on the front as well. You have an instrument line level selector, a 48 volt phantom power selector, as well as the air button. We'll talk about this a little more in the video. One of the other nice features that the Solo has is a direct monitoring for low latency. On the back, left and right monitor outputs. So if you have some studio monitors, you can plug them in. And there's a USB connection right here and a Kensington lock. As you can see, the Solo is very small. It fits in the palm of my hand, literally fits in the palm of my hand. Focusrite had musicians in mind when they designed this and maybe musicians on the go. So it's very easy to travel with. It's a simple setup. The way I see it is you have one microphone plugged in here and then your guitar plugged in here. I think about singer songwriters when you have this configuration. On my screen, I have two tracks right here, which are my bass and my voice. And I'm using this Scarlett Solo to do a test. And as you will you'll also be able to see, I have the Focusrite Control 2 app open. So I've selected instrument for my bass, which is a channel one input. And I have the phantom power and the air presence selected for the microphone. I do not use the auto gain on the solo interface. So I had to set the gain myself. And so I feel like maybe my voice is a little bit too hot right now when I'm speaking. So I'm going to turn it back a little bit. I'm trying to get to around minus 18, which is what the auto gain would usually aim for on the 2i2 interface. And here's an idea of how things will sound. I'm going to play my bass. And 
And I really think that's a beautiful sound, just nice and velvety. And as you see my voice, well, I'm peaking around minus 12, so I'm going to continue to dial that back a little bit, down around minus 18 or so. So that's kind of my sweet spot. Anyway, that's really, in a nutshell, very quickly, how the solo works. One instrument, one voice. Instrument on channel one, voice on channel two. And now you have an idea of how it sounds as well. As you can see over here, I'm actually using the Focusrite 2i2. So we'll have a close-up look in a moment. You can see that there are two mic inputs, and you can see the level moving as I talk, so that means it's receiving audio and outputting audio as well. And there are more features on the front end. We're gonna have a closer look at that in just a moment. I'm going to take a closer look at the 2i2 now. And I'm going to start with the auto gain, which is me using the auto gain feature, which adjusts the input volume accordingly to have a good audio signal. 2i2, I have the bass plugged into channel one, and I have the microphone plugged into channel two. And I'm going to first of all select instrument for channel one. So you should see, let me see here. As soon as I press instrument, you should see the word instrument turn green, I think. And now I'm going to choose my air mode, which could be presence or presence and drive. I like the presence and drive when it comes to the bass. And now I'm going to go over to channel two and I'm going to make sure it's not an instrument because it's a microphone and I'm going to add just presence for a little crispiness and I've enabled the clip safe so that if I talk too loud it will limit that sound a little bit. Now I'm going to set the auto gain. Start with the bass. I'm going to play. You can see everything's blue. That means it's thinking. So it's done. So I probably had it pretty close to where I wanted it, but there we go. And I do the same thing with the audio. I'm gonna keep talking and talking and talking and you can see the blue strip on channel two now is also moving backwards and I'm getting close to my target and perhaps we will hear more of my voice coming through. I think it probably needed a little adjustment to get it to the level we want it. So between these two things, I'm just going to play and talk. I'll put the phone down with the camera for one second. Bass sounds like this. And I, of course, I can talk over that too. So that just gives you an idea of how it works. The auto gain feature and the air, and you can definitely do it kind of all in one sitting. I really like using the Focusrite Control 2 app for this. It's click and go. It depends on your preference. You can also manipulate it from the front of the 2i2. And if I also, engage the safe mode, it means that if I ever make any loud noises like this, or if I bonk my microphone like this, it's going to suppress that noise as best as it can. And it's really good if you're doing interviews and things like that, and you have someone who yells really loud or coughs or sneezes or anything like that even, you could reduce the volume. And then the next thing I think is amazing is the air button. And the air button has two functions, and you'll see there are two colors. When it's white, it's not being used. The first one is the presence. So this adds a high end. You might hear it in my voice where it gets a little clearer. A little, oh yeah, I hear it right away. It, it just gets up in those tiny little sounds that my voice makes like tss, 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 tss. That's where you're going to hear more of it. And then when I press it a second time, I'm activating the drive, the saturation, and you hear it right away. It gets fat and heavy on the bottom. So these two things, if you, if you have your vo vocals or are recording an instrument, an amazing thing you can add as you're recording. It really gives an analog feel to a small little box, which I think is fantastic. Here is just simply to select between the first and the second preamp. If I press this, I won't have control over number one, which what I'm using right now, but I, I would be controlling number two. So all these would be sending instructions to number two. And the instrument is an instrument line level button that you use to select if you're playing with guitar or if you're playing with microphone. So let's quick look at the back. You'll see we have two inputs, one and two, sorry, there we go. We have two inputs, one and two XLR. So that's for your microphone or for vocals or recording acoustic guitar or something. Really simple. And you have two outputs. That's for your studio monitors. 
left and right. You have our USB cable, which is the one that's recording right now into my computer. And then we do have a not included five volt DC adapter slot. You can see that it's connected here with the USB signal. Here's our headphone amp and then the output for the studio monitors. So you can see that these units are extremely simple. And I'll show you side by side. If you look now at the, at the solo, you see very distinctly the absence of the auto and the safe buttons on the front. And of course there's an absence of a select button too because we're not having to choose all those different menus. So that's the thing that the Solo does not have that the Scarlett 2i2 does have. And I think if it's within your budget, then you should get the 2i2 just to have this option right here. I think it's well worth your while. At this point, it's worth mentioning that the Scarlett Solo with its one instrument input and one XLR input really is aimed at a singer-songwriter type situation. You would plug your guitar into instrument one and plug your microphone into the XLR. Whereas the Scarlett 2i2 is aimed for slightly more elaborate situations. I can think of having a stereo microphone set up. That's why there are two XLR inputs. I can think of recording a stereo piano, a digital piano with a left and right instrument input. Those are two primary uses. And it's interesting on the boxes, Focusrite says that the solo is for musicians, whereas the 2i2 is for artists. It's an interesting distinction. I, I feel the solo was designed for the singer-songwriter and the 2i2 is designed for something a little bit more elaborate. And of course, the big difference between the two is your access to the auto gain and the clip safe feature. I find this is a big difference. You would have to decide which of the interfaces is best for you. There is a nice group of apps that come along with the Focusrite Scarlett audio interfaces. First is access to Ableton Live Lite, which is a DW for audio production and recording. You also have access to Hindenburg, which is a DW for recording as well, but it's more aimed towards audiobooks and podcasts. You would have access to Focusrite's suite of audio plugins, EQs, and compressors from the Midnight Suite, the Scarlett Suite, and the Red Suite. There are various loop packs and sample packs for audio production. There are also two virtual instruments, Addictive Piano, which is a nice piano plugin, and also Novation Bass Station for getting those nice synth bass sounds. And there is also the Focusrite Control 2 app, which is an interface that controls the functions of the audio interface. For example, on the Focusrite Control 2 app, you will be able to control the auto gain, the safe clip, the air mode. It's an important part of the work process if you don't want to be playing with the buttons directly on the unit. To conclude this video, I'll say that Focusrite has done an awesome job with these Scarlett fourth generation audio interfaces. I'm super impressed with the preamps. I love the improvements, especially when you get the 2i2 and you see that you have access to the auto gain and the clip save feature. And I just feel that you're getting amazing quality, amazing value for the price. The only question that you have to answer is, do you need the solo or do you want the 2i2? My feeling is if you have the budget, the 2i2 will be a great fit. It's a little bit more flexible with its inputs and of course has access to the auto gain and clip save features. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you found it useful. Hit like, hit subscribe, and click on the link below to Best Buy's website to get the Focusrite Scarlet Audio Interface. Uh -huh.